What's up, everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email that's right here. But today I'm going to hit you up with my thoughts and opinions on this newest album from Lupe Fiasco called Drogas Wave. Now, Lupe has been a staple in the game since around 2006 when he dropped the great album Food and Liquor, but he has definitely had his ups and downs over the years. So for a couple of examples, he's had albums like Lasers and Drogas Light receive plenty of mixed reviews. These ones weren't critically acclaimed, and when you ask people about them, there's usually quite a big divide. But on the other hand, he has had critically acclaimed albums like Tetsuo and Youth and also The Cool. But no matter how you want to slice it, even on some of those more questionable albums, he was always known as a top-tier spitter. He's always bringing the bars, he's a great lyricist with plenty of themes and concepts, so he's not a rapper who's a slouch. And you know what? I didn't like that last project of his, Drogas Light, but I was really hoping he would come back with this one, and goddammit, he definitely did that. He has erased all my doubts about him as an MC. Not to say, like, you know, not to say I completely doubted him off the strength of that last album. That one just was an album of his I really didn't like, although I did like some of his past work. But, you know, this one just really reminded me of how great he can be, so... I was a little bit worried at first because one of the first songs, Drogas, has him speaking in Spanish. And I also saw that this project was over an hour and a half in length. Once you see that, you always feel a little bit of a red flag coming on the play because that's so long. It is just very hard to make an album that long and make it great. But this is coming out as a double disc as far as physical copies go. So in that instance, you know, you are getting a bit of a split here. There are plenty of themes and concepts. And I just like when a long project is split up into two like that because it helps you take it all in. You know what I'm saying? It's not just one long project crammed together like a 25, 30 track mixtape or something like that. So, you know, there are plenty of great themes and concepts on this. And I think the production here is very smooth and cohesive. For just a couple of examples, I love the Tribe Called Quest vibe and flute performance from uh, her name is Alina Penderhughes on Cripple. You get a hazy 90s boom bap vibe with Happy Timbuktu Day. This is a celebration of the life of the DJ called Timbuktu. He's from Chicago, I believe. And the singing features throughout this album just fit perfectly. You're not going to get crappy pop hooks on here, kind of like what Eminem was known to do on some of his past projects. I just felt like the vocalists here were much better and they fit the tracks better. You got Nikki Jean popping up on a bunch of tracks. She's someone who has worked with Lupe in the past, including on the song Haley Selassie, which is featured here. And even though the song is from 2014, it still fits in nicely with this project. Very smooth beat, and I don't think it felt like it was out of place. But I really want to start off by speaking on the songs Manila, Gold vs. The Right Things To Do, Wave Files, and Down. Sonically, these ones all fit that wavy and smooth description that I've been speaking on so far, and conceptually, they just deal with the perseverance of black people and the slave trade. I really felt like that was one of the main themes, or these are some of the main themes and concepts throughout this project, throughout the whole thing as I listened through, so there is certainly some black empowerment and uplifting vibes that you're going to get here. On Manila, for example, it opens up with a man speaking on the historical fucking over of black people ever since they came over here on slave ships and just everything that has gone on with us, so I thought that was a powerful moment. And then Lupe spits, you can accomplish anything if you survive blackness. That honestly might be my favorite line on the whole project just because of how simple and powerful it is. You don't always have to say some crazy complex shit in order to make a point. Sometimes you can just say something straight to the point like this, deliver it nicely like he did, and it really struck home. So I thought that was a great line on here among many. And I also got to say that this song flows perfectly into gold versus the right things to do. You're getting those same themes here about a slave ship that is uh, crashing, so... This is where things kind of get confusing. Like, I did read the interviews with Lupe where he was explaining things a bit. So there's this idea he has of these slaves called the Long Chains who didn't die in the water, but they were rebirthed, and they basically carried on and fought back. That's some of the ideas that you're going to pick up on this project. I took that as the story itself right there. It's sort of like a mythological thing. But also, again, just the perseverance of black people. There's themes of rebirth on here as well. But I thought that was a great song, Gold versus The Right Things To Do. Didn't really know why he was working a Jamaican accent on there. Maybe it was something interesting he wanted to try. But uh, this was just another one of those tracks that's very smooth and a great way to kick off the album. It's near the start of it. Now, the following tracks, Wave Files and Down, they take this picture even further with the long chains. This shit is kind of confusing. I don't know if I broke it down all the way, but I did give you a bit of a, a, bit of a rough idea in regards to that. And, you know, these songs break down where they're just enjoying their newfound freedom. So I thought the themes of Rebirth on this album were very powerful. I will talk about some more of those songs. I get into it in a moment because there are a couple of great songs that do that. Uh, but again, I thought it was applicable to life in many ways, just persevering, growing, and evolving. 
Now, Wave Files is definitely one of my favorite cuts because I love that aquatic underwater feel to the beat. Again, it's very smooth and melodic. And there's a catchy hook on this one as well. You're definitely going to be singing along with that shit. So, you know, I got to speak on how the hooks throughout this project are great as well. I just feel like sonically this is some of Lupe's most cohesive work. Even though it's long as hell, I enjoyed listening through it and it didn't feel like, oh my god, when is this shit going to end, make it stop? I didn't really get that feeling. I mean, it is hard for me with my current lifestyle with all these kids running around and shit to listen to a full project, but I got the chance to do it, and I didn't feel like I wasted my time, man. I really like this project a lot, so do not be turned off by the length of it. I'm getting a bit off track here, but that's kind of how this project is. This review is a little bit all over the place because that's what you get with this album. Well, not that it's all over the place, but it's very long and there's a lot to speak on, I should say. It's not sloppy or anything like that. This just, you know, I'm just attacking this from many different angles, so... Uh, I want to come back to the song Down. The hook on this I did find kind of silly, because again, it's coming back to the idea of the long chains being underwater. They're singing about lobsters, seahorses, and crabs being their homies. I get the idea of it, and still, sonically, this was very smooth, but I felt like that was kind of silly, you know what I'm saying? Just felt like some Little Mermaid shit where they're under the sea, under the sea. I could delete that part. Maybe I'll leave it just because I'm, I'm just feeling that type of way, man. It's late at night. I'm just getting my shit done. Whatever, man. You can cringe along with me if you want. We're going to keep it moving uh, with some of those rebirth themes that I brought up. Uh, you're also getting the themes of water with this song I'm about to speak on. <clears throat> Speaking of water. There we go. Cool and casual. Um, on the song Alan Forever, I thought this was a very powerful track, man. This one actually had my tears getting kind of sloppy, man. It felt like I was about to cry and shit. Just a very powerful track. Um, it's all about Alan Curdy, the three-year-old Syrian child who, obviously, you probably saw that picture on the news when he was found face down, drowned. Just a very horrendous picture, very sad moment all around. But what Lupe has done with this song is he just started to rap about the idea of Alan Curdy getting up. He actually didn't drown. And just him living his life. Just the idea of what he could have gone on to do. Because we all have that potential when we're children. It is just unbelievably sad how his life was cut short. So this track is just, it's really sad and beautiful at the same time. You know what I mean? It'll get you in your feelings and yet you feel that sort of glimmer of hope just in the sense that maybe we can just learn from this, learn from other horrible things that have gone on, just so it doesn't go on again. But I thought there was great storytelling on this, just the idea of him surviving and continuing to go on. He even becomes a lifeguard in this track, so you're getting all these water themes. You know, Alan Curdy, obviously, like I said, was found on that beach. It all just ties together, man. A lot of these songs tie together in one way or the other. So I think that's really dope. Some people might find it kind of scattershot, but I think the more you listen through it and pick up on the themes and concepts, the more it's all going to stick to you. So Really loved that track. It was beautiful. Uh, just an example of Lupe's God-tier songwriting ability. And Janila Forever is in the same vein. This is about a six-month-old child who was killed in Chicago, and he is just reimagining what her life could have been had she been given the chance. So these are great tracks. Love those themes of rebirth. Hopefully we can all learn from these things. Very dope track. A very dope album, man. Just to throw that out there again. So... Based on all the tracks I've spoken on already, you are getting some different themes and concepts, and Lupe is just showing you that he can do all these different things. He's really showing you his lyrical ability, the flows are great, obviously you're going to get countless bars and clever lines all over this thing, like I could spend forever breaking them down because you know how Lupe do, but... I just wanted to focus on the themes and concepts. I've said those words so many times, but I wanted to focus on that because that's what really stuck with me and I thought was impressive. But, you know, for just a couple examples of crazy bar fests, you can check out uh, Mur Mural Jr. Not a couple of ideas, but I mean, there's one song you can check, Mural Jr. for just one example. Um, you know, that's a great track. That's on the end of it. Obviously, it's a throwback to his song, Mural. That was a long-ass song where he was just going off on Tetsuo and Youth. So this is a junior version. You know what I mean? You got Donkey Kong. Then you got Donkey Kong Jr. You got Mural. And you got Mural Jr. But another track that I think is great is Imagine. On this one, he's just reminiscing on his come up in the rap game and basically saying that he wouldn't change a thing despite the drama that he went through. We all know he had some label troubles and other bullshit, but this was a cool track because it was a bit more simple compared to some of the more complex themes and ideas. He's just telling you about the rap game, what he went through, and how he wouldn't change it, so I thought that was dope. Then on Stack That Cheese, he actually raps from the perspective of an upcoming rapper who will just do anything to make it, because their whole idea is that if they make it, then everything is going to be fine. They're willing to do anything to make it. Posting wild all over IG, showing off, doing crazy shit that we see rappers do. So, you know, I think these songs also sort of tie in with the idea of slavery. 
not that literal slavery, but just the idea of maybe when you're trapped to a label or when you're trapped within yourself, just going out of pocket, trying to do anything you can to make it and prove to people that you are somebody greater. You know what I mean? Like so many rappers who are showing out, just that sort of thing. Obviously, uh, coming back to Lupe's problems with labels, we remember he was signed to Atlantic. So, you know, Atlantic, Atlantic slave trade, the ocean, water. You see how we did that. You understand. I just really think Lupe's ability to spit from other perspectives and tell stories, it, it has always been incredible, but on this album, he's really flexing that. And I think I might even like this album just as much, maybe even a little bit more than Tetsuo and Youth. I'm still listening to this. There's no way I'm going to be able to break down every single thing. Like, I could sit with this for weeks before I do my review. But I've listened to it enough that I picked up on some of the things. You guys can fill in the blanks. Tell me where I'm right or I'm wrong based on what your opinions are. I just love it sonically, and I am picking up on a lot. So, you know, I know what I'm going to rate it, which I'm going to get to in a minute, and I know that it's dope. But just to wrap up a couple last things, I wanted to say King Nas was a really dope song, but it did kind of surprise me because I expected this to be about Nas himself. Maybe some sort of biography or just showing love to him, but it has to do with Lupe's nephews and how they just have to grow up and become men. He's just kind of giving them some advice, you know, telling them to steer clear of certain things in the streets, play it safe. At least that's what I took from it. And this just has some flawless jazz production on it, man. Another great track. Just kind of surprised it wasn't about Nas, you know what I mean? I think everybody saw that and thought that's what it was, but it wasn't. So I guess he fooled us there. But to get to the rating that I did mention, I'm going to go with a 4.5 out of 5 on this one, man. Because for an album this long to be this good is damn impressive. It is not easy to do that. But hey, man, if you got great beats, you know, you're coming through with great bars and unique concepts and just doing all of it very well... I'm not going to have too many complaints, and I definitely don't have a lot of them here. I would say my least favorite track is EXO. This one did have a bit more of a poppy sound, and I wasn't too big on the hook on this one. Although earlier I was saying how the hooks were good, but, you know, this was one instance where I didn't like it. So, you know what? Lupe is not slouching at all. I'm glad that he got back on track. Let me do one of these. Yes. Just like that, Lupe, he did his shit right. He came back from that Drogas light, which I really did not like at all, man. Maybe I was a little bit over the top when I reviewed that, although I did think it was really bad. But this shit is really dope, so it makes up for it. But that's just what I gotta say. Again, you can fill in the blanks. Let me know what you took from it. Obviously, I'm not gonna get the shit 100% right because Lupe is very complex. But either way, let me know in the comments section what you think. Hit me up with all your love, your thoughts, and opinions. You know how it goes, man. You check me out on all my social media sites. Show me love and show me lots of it. Thank you for watching, everybody. I will see you next time.